Church, good morning church. We just want to welcome you this morning. Uh, we're going to go into a three-part series um, this morning. It's going to be on hope, faith, and love. And we'll be tackling scriptures on hope today. So we're going to do a three-part series on hope. So we just want to welcome you this morning. And uh, what is hope? We are, we are children of God, so we have a hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our hope comes from God. Our hope comes from the the life, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our hope is in the finished works of the Lord Jesus Christ. And amen to that because we believe in Him. And it is through Him that we have eternal life. So our hope is in the Lord. We hope in the Lord and we praise and put our trust in the Lord. And this morning that's what we're doing. So we just want to welcome you, Father, this morning. We want to lift your name up, Father. We just want to honor you and bring glory and lift your Son, Jesus Christ's name up. And Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the finished works of the cross that we can come to the Father through you. In Jesus' name we pray. And we'd just like to invite you and just welcome you this morning. And let's put our hope and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ today. So we're going to go over some scriptures that just verify that Jesus is our hope, and we put our hope in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning, let's see what Peter has to say about it. So, 1 Peter 3 through 5, heavenly inheritance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his ab abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, my brother, my sister, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Here's my notes on 1 Peter 3, 5. I love this. Peter one's, Peter's everyone's favorite apostle. Blessed the name of our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He brings glory to the Father by calling Him God and acknowledging Him as His Father and honoring the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior first. So the first thing He does is introduce who the Father is and, and describes the Father and brings glory to the Father through the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His abundant mercy, he, has begotten us through His Son, Jesus, our living hope, through the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We put our hope, our faith, and love in Jesus Christ through the repentance of sins, to turn away from sins and believe in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and believe in that He is the Son of God, and that He died on the cross for the forgiveness of all sins, and that he rose from the tomb on the third day. The risen king. I'm going to say that again. He rose from the tomb on the third day, the risen king. And he sits at the right hand of the Father like he foretold, like he told us. So we have an inheritance of incorruptible and undefiled that is everlasting, does not fade away, and is reserved for you. Just for you, salvation, if you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, who are kept by the power of God, believers. So he keeps believers uh, through the power of God, through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last times by his Holy Spirit. Remember, it said the, there's a scripture that says that, that he will pour out his spirit in the last days so we are saved by grace through faith and the holy spirit sustains us he will lead you and guide you into all truth so when you get saved and the holy spirit comes and lives in you the holy spirit sustains you meaning the holy spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth as long as you are walking in the spirit seeking god for guidance asking him for direction this is how we do that so, uh, moving right along, 1 Peter 3.15, 
But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So when people ask you, you know, how are you sustained? Why, how does, how does uh, God hold you? Why do you have so much hope in the Lord that you're ready to answer them and that you answer them with meekness and fear? Because what? We fear the Lord. We have fear of the Lord. And not in a way that we fear the Lord where, oh, I got to serve him because if I don't serve him, you know, he's going to he's gonna punish me. No, God has got a choice. He gives you a choice to come to him. And when you come to him, He's open arms to you, but people who reject him are people who are um, lost. Their mind is clouded. Uh, Satan has has so much filth in their mind that they can't comprehend Jesus, and it sounds foolishness to them. And it sounds, you know, they make fun of us. They think that, that God is not real, but if they only knew that one day they're going to stand in front of God, and they will be in front of God, and they never believed in Him. And, and and when you don't believe in God, you have no hope. Where's your hope at? Your hope is in this world. This world has nothing for you. We put our hope, trust in God, in the finished works of the cross. And we are inheritance. We are inherited into the Lord kingdom, into the kingdom of the Lord. And that is beautiful. So I'm going to read it again. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for the reason of the hope that is in you. With meekness and fear. Okay, here's my note. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Fear of the Lord and reverence Him, the Creator of all. Always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you the reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So the hope that is in you is the Holy Spirit, the light of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ. You are, are not only have the, to read the Word, but study the Word, spend time in the Word. Then you will have truth to stand on in the Word. You will not be easily swayed because you know what the Word says. And when you hear the word being ministered, and it is not the word of God because they are adding or taking away, then you know the truth, and you know the word to stand on the truth. Because people today, remember the Bible says that you have people that come in sheep's wolf's clothing to give you the word, but it's not the word of God. They twist the word, they add and they take away, and it is Satan. It is Satan trying to draw you away from the word from the Lord Jesus Christ because remember who is the word the word is Jesus the living word then you have truth to stand on the word you put your hope in his word so our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ the creator thank you Lord thank you Ephesians 4 4 there is one body one spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling one Lord one faith one baptism one God and father of all one God and father of all who is above all through all and in you all Woo! one Lord one faith one baptism one God and father of all who is above all and through all, and in you all. Amen to that. And notes on Ephesians 4.4. 4. There is one body, we are the body of Christ, and one spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit from the Lord our Father God. Just as you were called in one hope of your calling, just as he called you to put on our hope in your calling, you will that he has a predestined, for you so you will walk in what he has predestined for you already because we put our hope our trust in the Lord in the Lord Jesus Christ so one Lord Jesus Christ one faith faith in the gospel our Lord Jesus Christ one baptism when we are accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ spiritually hence we are the body of Christ his hands and feet 
He is the head. And you heard me correctly. When you give your heart to God, like we are going to be surrendering our heart to God later. When you give your heart to God, the Holy Spirit comes and lives in you, but the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ spiritually. Okay? Spiritually. So there's the first baptism right there. You're baptized into the body of Christ when you give your heart to God. So today, when we give our heart to God, when we surrender to God, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us like the Word tells us, but the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. So you are the body of Christ. Amen. We are His hands and feet. That's why He's the head and we are in His hands and feet. And that's why we do the works of the Lord. So God is our Father in heaven and is above all. He sits outside of all His creation. There is no greater than our Father. There is none greater than our Father. He sits out of time. He sits outside His creation. And all the, all the, although He is in everything, nothing that was made was made through Him. And He is in, your, in you always. As we say in Texas, He is in y'all. So upon salvation, of course, is, isn't there scripture that says, I will never leave you or forsake you, Deuteronomy 3, 31, 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. So the Lord is with you. Think about that. The Lord is with you in everything that you are going through right now. Right now in 2022 with the COVID, right now in 22 with all the hate and the diversity that we have, all the um, the things that we have going on right now. We have the Roe versus Wade. We have the um, all the mass shootings and the mass killings and the hate that is going on right now. We need the Lord and we need the Lord to be with us and to protect us and to lead us and guide us because it's not even safe to go to work anymore. It, it, it is the world is getting worse and worse and we have to stand up and fight. But way we stand up and fight is in the Lord Jesus Christ. We put our hope and trust in the Lord. We cover ourselves with the blood and our family with the blood. And we ask for protection and he protects us and leads us and guides us. And he will always be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Amen and amen to that. Uh, Colossians 1, 27 and 28. To them God will, will to make known that they are the riches of glory of the ministry among the Gentiles which is in Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that they may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. No, when they're saying every man, they're talking about mankind, so that is men and women. Uh, here's the notes on Colossians. God willed in our hearts to make known what are his riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, mankind. All right. He lets known the mysteries of his word. The Bible is mysteries. He put the desire in your heart, the hope in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through repentance and forgiveness of sins. We put our hope in Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Savior of the world. That's our Lord and Jesus, Savior of the world. He gave his life for you. He died on the cross for you. He shed his blood for you. How do we not reverence him? How do we not acknowledge him? How do we not repent to him and ask for forgiveness and accept him as our Lord and Jesus Christ when he did that for you? He loved you so much that he died yet while we were still sinners, the word tells us. Him we preach ministering the word of God, Jesus Christ, the crucified Jesus, the risen king to all mankind, God's creation teaching all the wisdom of his mysteries, the Bible, that every man, woman, may present themselves perfect in Jesus Christ. And how are we made perfect in Jesus Christ? 
through the love of Jesus Christ. The love of Jesus Christ makes us perfect. We are only made perfect in Jesus Christ, not ourselves, through the love of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen to that. And uh, Romans 5, 15, 12, 13. There shall be a root of Jesse, and he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall have hope. In him the Gentiles shall have hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy, peace, and believing that you may abound in hope, the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen to that. So here's the notes on Romans. There shall be a root of Jesse, David's father's lineage, would come through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, would be born of a virgin in Bethlehem. So Jesus Christ comes through the lineage of David. He will reign over the Gentiles, and in him the Gentiles shall have hope. We put our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ for, for the forgiveness of sins and to repentance and to accept him as our Lord and Savior unto salvation. Amen. May the God of our hope fill you with joy and peace in believing. John 3.16, believing in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. For salvation, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will sustain you. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. He will bring things to your remembrance. He will only say what he is told. Think about that. This is the only, who is the only one that can tell the Holy Spirit what to do? Only the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Meditate on that. The Holy Spirit lives in you, dwells in you, and the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you, but the Holy Spirit is told. And the only one that can tell the Holy Spirit is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and His Father. So when you get a word from the Holy Spirit, that's the Spirit of God. That is God. So that's the Lord ministering through you, through His Son, through the Father, through the Holy Spirit. And we put our faith and trust in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us. The Holy Spirit is always overlooked, but the Holy Spirit does the work of the Lord. Amen. The Holy Spirit is from the Lord. Have you not, uh, Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Have you not known, and this is from the New King James, have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have not no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Have you not known? Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, so right here. On e, uh, we're going to go over it on Isaiah 40 and just break it down a little bit. So right here is telling us again, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Father, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. So our God, our Father, the one true God, the creator of all, he neither faints nor grows weary. He knows all this and is over all. His understanding is unsearchable. He sits outside his creation. He sits outside of time. Uh, he, he gives power to the weak, and those who have no might, he increases strength. So he gives power to the weak through the Holy Spirit. You cannot enter into his will without the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't do his work without the power. He will lead you and guide you into all truth and shows you things to come. He does, he does the work. The Lord does the work. We are just His vessels, nothing more, nothing less. We are His vessels. 
We walk in the power and authority. We pray. We cast out demons. We pray for healing. But it is the Lord that does the work. The Lord brings the healing. The Lord brings uh, salvation. The Lord brings um, uh, the removal of demons and, and bad, evil spirits. Uh, the Lord does that. Not I. We pray and we put our hope and belief in Him, knowing that He will come and deliver His people. Amen to that. So it says right here, um, He increases your strength through the Holy Spirit that you can can accomplish His will. 1 Corinthians 1.27, we're referencing this. But God shows what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God shows what is weak in the world to shame the strong. So God gets people like us and He uses us because they know that we don't have anything man i'm a nobody no one knows i'm nothing it is the lord jesus christ who does the work and it is his will and it is his power and authority that we walk in so when we pray for people and they're getting healed and demons are getting casted out it isn't me i ain't doing nothing but opening my big mouth with his word he does the work he has the power and authority he heals, he delivers, and he saves. Bottom line. Bottom line. Even though you shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, even though the young will faint and be weary, and the young shall utterly fall. Amen. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There's another scripture that I like, and it says, But those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. So the word wait here in this one, in the New King James, is saying that wait could be replaced with hope. So we put our, we, but those who wait on the Lord could also be saying those who put their hope in the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up like wings like eagles. It is very simply, those who wait on the Lord, who put their hope in the Lord, um, shall renew their strength. They shall walk in authority and power that Jesus has given us from His, our Father, while we wait on the Lord. In other words, go and do the will of the Father while you are waiting on the Lord. Put your hope and faith in the Father and go do His works, His finished works that He has that he has set before the foundation of the world for you. So I'm going to read uh, 31, verse 31 in the NIV, and this is the one that uses the word hope. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen to that. So um, for I, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I... For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you future and a hope. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says your Father, the Lord, the thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. He wants to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me, go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me, and you will find me, when you search for me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me, to my lost brothers and sisters. And I will bring you, and you will search for me with all your heart, and you will find me. So search for the Lord with all your heart. I will be found, but you, says the Lord, I will bring you back from captivity the Lord, if you call upon Him in the spirit and in truth with your heart and just come to Him with prayer. And prayer is you speaking to God in your own language, your own heart, not, Oh, Father God, thy in heaven, the Lord, the Creator of all. No, Father. God, I need you. Lord Jesus Christ. That's prayer. Uh, so right here, here's, here's the notes on it. So, 
once again, so the Lord says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you future and hope. For the Lord loves you and has a plan for you, and in this plan you will have peace, and the evil must flee. Isn't there a, a scripture that says that, uh, that uh, resist the devil and he will flee? You will find your hope and your future in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Then you will call upon me and go and pray, and I will listen to you. Call upon the name of the Lord with all your heart, and pray to him honestly with all your heart, and he will hear you. He will listen to you. The Lord loves you. The Lord is with open arms waiting for you to come to him. And you will see me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. The word says the Father is looking for those who come to him in spirit and in truth. Come to the Lord with your heart. Come and reverence him and, and surrender yourself to him. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will be found, says the Lord. He hears your prayers and he will redeem you to his son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins. And through salvation, you can come to the Father, John 14, 6. So I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future, NIV. So today, we're standing and putting all our hope and faith and trust in the Lord. And we have been ministering the word and planting and watering seed this morning. So if we have been planting and watering seed and you would like to give your heart to the Lord, I would like to, um, to, uh, to pray with you. And we can ask the Father to come in and, and start cleaning house and, and welcome the Father and, 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 and just repent and tell him that we no longer care to walk in this world the ways of this world or the ways that I've been walking, the ways of sin. I not only want to repent of the sins that I've committed, Father, towards you and towards hurting myself and, and not walking in the will and the, and the power and authority that you have given me. But today I take a stand and today I choose you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen to that. So... If today the word has been ministering to you, I'm going to ask you to make a bold leap of faith. I'm going to ask you to take a leap of faith. The Bible says that it is by grace through faith that we come to know the Father. So you're going to take a leap of faith today in, in believing in a God that has ministered to you. You don't see him. You don't hear him. He ministers to you and he uses people to minister to you. And this morning, if the Lord has been ministering to you, take a leap of faith. You know, we have to stand up for the Lord. And today is the day. But remember, God is a God of choice. If you don't choose Him, that is your decision. We just bring you and minister the Word and plant and water seed. All I'm doing is planting and watering. When I ask you guys to give your heart to God, I'm taking a leap of faith, believing that the Lord is ministering to you. And by this leap of faith, we ask you to give your heart to God and, and come to be a child of God and enter His kingdom. So that is our mission, is to win souls to the kingdom, to minister His word and let Him do the work. So God has been ministering to you and you have been hearing His word. Receive Him. Take a leap of faith today. I will pray with you, and I'll lead you into prayer. We'll ask the Lord to come in and just start working on you and changing you, and just to come into your life. And, you know, I always say this, He'll make you a better father. He'll make you a better husband. You know, He'll make you a better, I'm going to use the word man. You know, He'll make you a better woman, better man, a better person, you know. So let's put our hope and faith in God this morning. So if you would like to take a leap of faith and you would like, uh, look right here, Isaiah 12, 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for Yah, which is Yahweh. The Lord is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. He is my strength and my song. So let's put our faith and trust in him. 
So I would ask you to rise and take a, a leap of faith, a bold stand for the Lord this morning. Amen. So let's invite the Lord in. Lord, we just invite you in this morning. We have been ministering your word to your children, Lord. And we stand and believe in your word and we stand and we put our faith and trust in your son, Jesus Christ, for the finished works of the cross. He is the risen king. The tomb is empty. And we serve him and we believe in him and we trust him because that tomb is empty. Amen, Father. So we just invite you and draw your children near to your son, Jesus Christ. Speak to their heart, Lord. Speak to their heart. Oh, I just took my label off. Yeah, speak to the heart, Lord. So we ask you this morning, Lord, just to come in, Lord, and help us this morning, and 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 open our eyes and our ears to your to your word and to your Son Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Lord, Father God, I come before you, Lord, and I ask you to forgive me for my sins, all my sins, Lord. And Lord, I want to turn from my sin not only repent and ask for forgiveness but to change I no longer want to do the things of this world and the things that I do the things that hold me back from you Lord I lay this at your feet and ask you to allow your Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me into all truth I believe that you are the Son of God I believe that you sit at the right hand of the Father. I believe that, uh, that you died on the cross for my sins. And I thank you. I believe that you rose from the dead, from the tomb, is empty on the third day. I believe that you rose from the grave like you said, Lord. And we believe and serve you because you did rise on the third day. You conquered death. You conquered the hell, death, and the grave. And we thank you and we serve you. And I ask you to come into my heart and to be my Lord and Savior. And from this day forward, help me to become the new creature that I am, the new creation that I am in you. The old man has died. So allow me and show me how to let the old man die, all my old wicked ways. And let me live and serve and open and, and, and come work in my heart and my mind and my body. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning for that. That is, I will always say this to you, that is the best decision that you can make. You are a child of God. You've just been inherited into the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit comes and lives in you. He gives you a guardian angel. He protects you. He, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. 